Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll hand you over now to Philip Savin. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Philip Savin. I'm, a, I'm from Lithuania. Jono uh, Kivanok, I'm first time on the B sides, and uh, I would like to present uh, you how I got into cybersecurity uh, in the end of the last millennium. Let's go. So it's 1990, and I got my first computer. It was ZX Spectrum, but not original one like this one, but uh, one made from uh, microchips from old Soviet military equipment, as I was told. And of course, I started playing games. And uh, maybe I'm a bad player, but I got so many times seeing this screen that I just got frustrated. So I need to ask advice from some wise man. And that wise man was a guy who's selling games in computer store. And he told me that I need a pokes. And uh, poke is some command which I need to enter to get something like infinite lives. So I need just to need like pokes, blah, 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 memory address and do the baby memory patching and uh, get infinite lives or whatever. I asked how it works and he explained me in basic language. So it just replaces minus one with zero and life doesn't decrease. And I understood that I admire those who write games and those who create pokes. And fast forward to 1995, uh, I got this IBM Optiva with multimedia. And multimedia means with CD-ROM and Sound Blaster 16. And most important that I got a US Robotics modem. And uh, with terminal program, I, I can just uh, type some commands like uh, AT, Dell, Pulse, phone number, and connect to remote uh, computer who is in answer mode. And this pulse mode means that uh, the phone system of our country at the time was analog. And uh, after the modems are connecting, they are just saying the connection speed. And during uh, connection negotiation, it modem produces fax noises, like, like psh, 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 things like that. And uh, after many, many hundreds of connections, I was able to train my ear to distinguish between which connection speed I will receive based on the modem noise. And upon connection, I could connect to bulletin board systems. Uh, it's a very nice thing, like you can read and post messages, upload to download files. But mostly the messages were trash talk, like if you read this message, you're an idiot, and this kind of teenage humor. And uh, most of the files was one or more viruses in each of them. Well, uh, the good thing I downloaded Amiga mod music files and played in the fast tracker to listen to some music because it was pre-MP3 era. And my takeaway is that there is a life online, but it's dangerous and interesting. Yeah, fast forward to 1999. Uh, I just got Pentium 166 computer and overclocked it on the next day because if you don't, you have, if you have a computer without overclocked <laughs> Pentium processor, then you're just kind of lame guy. I used already internet on the dial-up modem for flat rate. Uh, remember I was talking about our line was analog. Uh, so the telephone company couldn't bill me per minute. But the state start privatization of our phone company. And things happen something like revolution. Phone users with Lithuanian flag was walking on the streets for real and demanding uh, stop the state the acquisition of our, phone, of our telecom. Uh, but Telia, which was our telecom source too, uh, say that this is, will greatly increase the quality of the voice calls, but with side effect that can start billing us by minute. It was really, it was rage. Uh, all the banners on the sides saying the stop telecom or things like that. And by the way, this uh, banner on the right, it was painted by me in 1999 and found it while preparing for this presentation. Ah, yeah, this is uh, like poster from the old times. It says in Lithuanian that uh, you will all be shaves, shaved like a sheep. Of course, I didn't want to be a sheep, yeah? So I tried to dive into freaking. Uh, it's officially defined like a fraudulent manipulation of telephone signaling in order to make free phone calls. Like free, free phone calls is keyword here, yeah. So I started to reading 2600 and fracasines. Uh, I discovered that guy who uh, used the toy whistle to inter intercept the phone lines and put into the command mode. 
uh, about different boxes, particularly the blue box, uh, which was Jobs and Wozniak was selling in the early days. And it allowed to intercept the uh, phone line, uh, enter the command mode, and do the phone call routing. And it was a story that one guy from the United States uh, wrote using blue box, wrote his call uh, from US to, to Europe, from Europe to Asia, to Australia, to Hawaii, and called his neighbor next door. And delaying the phone, phone conversation was about 10 seconds because the signal was traveling all, about, all around the world. Well, uh, I read really a lot of, uh, about phone systems, how they work, but they understand that they are, this is useless. Because our phone, our phone lines, the new ones, are based on different things, and uh, the signaling and uh, voice are on separate channels. So it's inevitable. I need to have a job to pay my internet bill. Uh, my, my first job was developing Navision on SCO Unix using serial terminal for little, little, little money. We didn't have internet on the local area network, and I given the, the big printed developer manuals that I should follow while developing. But I was, uh, before that I was playing with Fox Pro, so it was nothing new for me, uh, and I was, I was able to pretty fast complete the task that was given to me. And the rest time I spent on reading Unix manual pages. There was some angry secretary that uh, complained that I'm not reading the manuals all the time, but I'm doing something, something other, so okay. There was a program at the time called WinNuke. All you need is just type an IP address and press the button and remote Windows 95 will be crashed. Uh, I looked at uh, its source online, I was curious how it works, but it's pretty primitive. It just makes socket uh, connect and uh, say the payload to crash the target. And the salt here is uh, out of band flag for the send message. It uh, raises blue screen of death, death on Windows 95. Yeah, and fun fact that the things on, thing the, on the right is actual icon for Windows computers in Mac OS X. So my takeaways uh, take was that at work uh, I sell my time for money, but I, my job must be interesting, otherwise I feel that it's not worth the time. But most important that I was very, very likely want to discover something like the nuke bug myself. So I started to digging about other denial of service attack, like smurf ping and free fire, local area network denial of service, and ST, teardrop, and many others. And while searching, I discovered a very nice program called Aggressor Exploit Generator. Well, it's something like HPing packet constructor, but uh, with nice user interface and uh, also attack process. Uh, the authors of this program mentioned that they ho have their own IRC server, so I felt urgent need to chat with the author, maybe ask for uh, some unreleased version of this program. Well, IRC was the place where all this attack was used because IP addresses of the users was clearly vis visible. Uh, so I launched, uh, I dual booted to, Win to Linux, uh, launched BitChix and connected to the IRC server of uh, aggressor authors. But there is nothing really good came from them. They were from Turkey, they speak only own language and was silent most of the time. But there I met two guys from Uzbekistan and they told me that all the interesting things happening on FNET IRC network. So I just connected there and started to hanging out there. While hanging out on FNET, I understood the same valuables. Like you search for bugs, bugs uh, are used in exploits, exploits using to get shells, and shells use it to get more shells. But the bugs stage is almost, almost always was skipped because most, uh, most people were there were script tedious and they were searching and hunting for exploits. Yeah, and also there is some, some people seeking attention. It was some guy, I remember, his nick was Govboy, and he was uh, owner of the Hack Koza uh, site, and that site was something like modern exploit DB. And meanwhile, I was just reading uh, uh, different zines and papers and diving into exploitation techniques. 
uh, everything was much easier at the time. No position independent executables, uh, address layout space randomizations and stake scanners and things like that. And also a lot of exploits at the time was distributed in broken form. So if you have skill, you can just fix them and use them. Or you can detect that they are actually fake and was also a lot of fake exploits. Well, the atmosphere of the time was nothing uh, near the, this inspirational movie. It, it was uh, more like for mo modern 4chan. Uh, but uh, what is interesting of the time that is very diverse uh, uh, variety of different operating systems and architectures was used on the internet. But uh, the thing is that they often use the same code, the same open source program with the same bugs, just uh, compiled for different architectures. But porting like Stack, uh, stack Overflow exploits was not that hard because you just know the uh, target architecture, stack layout, and get shell code, and often that's enough. Yeah, I needed to mention that uh, most of famous uh, hacker of the time was Kevin Mitnick. Uh, he was jailed for for hacking. It was like a kind of internet hero. This yellow like yellow sticker was all around the internet, and in the United States, it was on the bumper of the cars. Uh, so, but he served five years, re released in 2000, and then just founded a security consultancy company. And it was felt some, some, somehow wrong, like uh, the guy, the hacker, the hero, and just jumping into business, no? Okay. When there is a uh, notorious event happens. Uh, some group of individuals who call themselves PHC takes over the frag channel on FNET. And they're stating that they are supporters of new anti-security movement. It boils down to that hackers hack, meaning break into computer systems. They discover, they don't disclose, disclose bugs, uh, hack techniques and exploits. And if you are dis disclosed, then you are enemy. If you make money of that, you are enemy. And, if, and enemies must be owned and rammed. There is a known text from 1986, it's a Hacker's Manifesto. It states that uh, the hacker's crime is out of curiosity and uh, outsmarting you and some romantic things. And ends with the phrase that you may stop this individual, but you can't stop us all. And PHC relays the new Hacker's Manifesto, uh, which says that you can't stop me and you certainly can't stop us all. And direct it states that hackers is, is right exploits, penetrate systems, and keep that in secret. And then actions is followed. Uh, they release an own version of the frag uh, Many consider it very interesting because last version, last issues of frag was stagnating. They don't, doesn't have anything like directly related to hacking. Uh, also, they started posting the results of so-called Project Mayhem. It's uh, the war declared, declared on security industry and white hats. They, they posted the spools, mail spools, uh, they rammed boxes of many famous white hats of the time, and uh, even they got into the art of OpenBSD and its CVS repository. The project mayhem uh, was declared in a zine called the late. It's still on the text files, and it is pretty funny to read if you are okay with lead speech. And this was the beginning of the one of the late issues, which showing the proof that they hacked into open CVS uh, openbsd.org. And real life manifestation of late was this speech on DevCon 10 uh, by Global Security and called Wolves Among Us. It's still on YouTube, you can watch it. Uh, it was presented by three guys. It's Silvio, it's very nice, brilliant technical guy from Australia. Uh, I learned uh, anti-debugging techniques from him. Next one is Goebbels. Goebbels was author of many interesting exploits of the time, and he claimed that he's Lithuanian, so it was interesting for me. And uh, one exploit comment says that in Lithuania there is only one internet connection, and it's Goebbels who's using it. Uh, and the last one was the Unix terrorist. He has this uh, highly intellectual person uh, who, like an uh, ideological father to L8 and to PHC. Also, uh, 
I also s s many times I have seen this guy with Nick Soup Nazi on the Frack on the F Net channel. And many, many years later, I discovered that his real name is Albert Gonzalez. And he made something like operation called uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. And it was one of the biggest credit card for theft in ever. And it was the, was the Unix terrorist whose real name is Stephen Watt, who created Sniffer for Gonzalez and was jailed for two years for that. And Gonzalez was uh, says that like a lot of money and uh, things like house in Miami, BMW, Glock gun, diamond ring in Rolex watch. And he was jailed for 20 years and he will be released uh, this September. And uh, all these events are described in details in TV series American Greed episode, uh, Operation Get Rich or Die Trying. Well, what was there is left as history. Uh, many years passes and then now exploits are complex and often executed in chains. Uh, now I work at QGI and we deal a lot of IoT devices. And they have to admit that sometimes I smile when I see there are no exploitable bugs like uh, primitive common dejection or stack overflows because they remind me of that good times. Kesenem Saban, thank you for your attention. Many thanks, Philip. Many thanks.